Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponderon Weather. In this update, we've got a big cool down for the central part of the US, even less some snow on the higher terrains of Wyoming and bringing much more pleasant conditions on the backside with some of the coldest temperatures since May. Also, we have the remnants of K that's gonna be winding down over portions of Southern California. Then we've got heavier rains filtering out of the southeast, but then all eyes turn to the Bering Straits for our next big storm system in the extended range. Welcome back, everyone. How's it going? This is your weekend update. I appreciate all my followers out there and my new followers. If you do like detailed weather breakdowns on the tropics and North America, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm and i'm also going to be releasing my overall winter thoughts tomorrow so definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that so let's delve into what's happening over the next 10 days because right now i also enlarge my cursor for those of you that want to follow along and actually can see it better yeah look at all that purple <laughs> there's actually there actually had some snow yesterday in bighorn uh mountains of wyoming but about much pleasant conditions high temperature of 52 degrees in denver today after they saw 99 just the other day so that's a pretty significant drop and that will continue to drop further south and funnel all the way down actually in texas here's the remnants of k going to be moving offshore of the pacific but that left some much needed rain over portions of southern california and those cooler conditions will continue to dive southward so if you take a look at the overall satellite picture you can actually see where that cold front lies right <laughs> right there in the midsection of the country and there's the remnants of k hanging out the coast of pacific still drop dropping some tropical rains but those will be ending tomorrow we've got these two systems up here with D danielle and earl going to be winding themselves down and going ahead of the open waters it's still fairly clear out here in the main development region of the caribbean but i think that's actually going to change as we get deeper into the middle end of the month but now right now we've got this another blob headed in from the gulf of mexico extending into portions of uh, portions of the panhandle of florida bring in some heavier rains uh, this afternoon as we have this monsoon trough that's still going to be remaining active and there's actually signs we this these storms actually could take a somewhat similar track to what k did by the time we get to, to this current weekend so yeah we have a lot happening here so let's take a look at the overall setup for as far as rain prospects for the next 48 hours so it's really has to deal with the remnants of k that's going to be moving offshore most of this is going to be today as it's going to be drying out for tomorrow but still some much needed rain going to be extending further into portions of central california this time and then monsoon flow continues to remain active and alive and well where we have that cold front bringing some instability into portions of iowa missouri back into illinois and indiana going into wisconsin and to michigan but as it moves further south say into oklahoma you're still going to get a little bit of rain but i don't think that rain actually makes it to texas because it'll be pretty pretty dry behind that uh, front but out ahead of it it's all about that blob out here today into portions of the southeast that's going to bring some unsettled conditions florida for the panhandle bringing into portions of georgia headed into south carolina as well as into into virginia and north carolina as well so but behind that this is pretty nice folks this is a kind of a taste of fall right i mean we've had look at that widespread 40s and 50s even 30s showing up on the map uh behind in the higher terrain coming up on monday morning and yeah widespread 50s in oklahoma when's the last time you actually saw that that's 65 in dallas that's the coolest temperature you've actually seen since may and that's at the airport all the all the outlying areas will probably drop into the upper 50s so it's going to feel and it's going to be low dew points as well right so you, it's going to feel it's definitely going to feel like fall at least for a day or two because <laughs> we do have some of the heat starting to build back by the middle of next week so if we extend the view and take a look at the overall setup on the north american view as we go into tuesday yeah we got the zonal flow coming back the zonal flow basically means a, a drier flow with more more the more ridging with that flow and as you can see this ridge is going to be starting to build so as the winds turn around yeah, we got high pressure going to be building into the midsection of the country while we have yet another low pressure system going to be traversing off the eastern Pacific. 
then all eyes are going to be turning towards the Bering Straits where we are going to be our the beginning stages of our next big storm system that's going to be on the table. So let's highlight this area. So let's talk about going into Thursday because as, as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, it's that ridge is going to be really building across the midsection of the country. So typically what happens after a fairly decent sized cold front it kind of tends to clear the atmosphere out back behind it. So we're going to have a, several days back behind, at least in the, uh, in the midsection of the country, a pretty clear skies, right? It's going to be really nice, low dew points. Everything is going to be <laughs> really nice to get outside and just enjoy the cooler conditions of what you've seen pretty much all summer long. But that definitely changes what the ridge of high pressure is going to be building in. So if we head into next weekend, this uh, by next Saturday, there's that low pressure center, right? It's almost deja vu again. We have another low low pressure, probably going to be another tropical storm, going to be traversing a crop and taking somewhat of a similar path that what K did. So, I mean, by the time we get into next Saturday, we could be looking at another tropical storm approaching the Baja, California again around Cabo San Lucas as all eyes will be turning towards Alaska into the Bering Strait as we have a significant storm system that's going to be really starting to build. You see it's down to about a 988 millibar low pressure with a pretty significant jet streak coming across the Bering Strait and that's going to take a beeline down further south going into a kind of a bowling ball trough and it's going to be bringing much unsettled conditions and uh, much obviously much cooler conditions because when's the last time we take a look at the the, uh, the Pacific North American and actually see it negative, right? You've been in an oppressive heat wave for an extended period of time in much drier conditions. So this is almost kind of a welcome sight to see that it actually goes negative because we do have a big trough that's going to be diving in complements of that system that's going to be diving down in from the Bering Straits from Alaska. And that's going to take a beeline towards the Pacific Northwest and bringing much un more unsettled conditions, cooler the conditions, rainier conditions, and even more snow that's going to be dumping into Idaho, into Montana. It's probably our most significant snowstorm of the season. So let's take a look at the overall water precipitation index. And yeah, you can definitely see the swirl happening by the time we get into next weekend, diving down from the, from the Bering Straits, Going to be diving into the into the pacific northwest bring in more unsettled conditions for them so it's been a while since you've actually seen some rain in this region while all eyes will be turning further to the south again right we've got this little system down here that's man look at that almost four inches rainfall rates with this system pretty a, a compact system so we'll be have to watch this exact track, but signs are already hinting that it could take a, a somewhat similar track to what K did just the last couple of days. So if we take a look at the overall 500 millibar, you can definitely see this bowling ball trough really starting to set up and it's going to be massive, guys. So a lot of unsettled weather is going to be coming by the time we get into the 19th, 20th time frame as we start the you know, as we get closer to the first official day of fall, where we make that transition from summer to fall, right? So we'll be watching this big significant trough that's going to be diving down. And so, yeah, by the time we get into the 19th next Sunday, we've got a 974 millibar low pressure we're going to have to be dealing with with a very powerful jet streak kind of come across sending heavier rains extending in portions of, of Washington and Oregon by then and really changing the game as we watch this low pressure center right off the coast here of the of the Baja of California while the much of the central U.S. is going to be well above average so if you take a look at some of these temperature gradients by then yeah we're talking 15 20 upwards to 25 degrees Below average temperatures coming in with that bowling ball trough in Idaho and to Montana, while the midsection of the country is the complete opposite. So we're going to have some pretty extreme temperature gradients by the time we get into the 19th, 20th of the month. Midsection of the country is 20, 25 degrees above average and a 50 degree drop on the backside with this low pressure coming in. And underneath that, it's going to be plenty cold enough to snow. So we could be looking at our first decent significant snowstorm 
of the season coming in for Idaho into Montana. And that will extend into Wyoming. Again, that will be towards where we make that transition from summer into the first official day of fall. It definitely, <laughs> we're gonna be coming in with a snowstorm, all right? So we got a pretty, pretty significant kind of bowling ball trough that's gonna be diving in into that parts of the country, bringing much more unsettled conditions Dot, you know, tapping in into that warm sector in the midsection of the country. And typically that spells severe weather once we get into the heart, heart of the, the, the U.S. Central Plains here. So we'll definitely have to be on high alert uh, with this system coming in at, into the extended range. But if we take a look at the tropics, obviously it's been quiet, right? We've been through Earl, we're only at five named storms. It's been nice, right? It's been really quiet season so far. But we all know this is today is the actual first official peak day of of you know it's a hurricane season. So so typically it's a lot more a lot more uh, active this time of year. But it's just not right. We've had a lot of Saharan dust. We've had a lot of dry air. And if we look at the next ten days on the EPS guidance, we have some unsettled unsettled ensemble members. Now, typically when you have these little waves that come across. Uh, the off of Africa, if they if they remain weak, right? If they remain weak, they tend to keep on a more westward track, right? And so, but once you get out here into portions of Puerto Rico, there's not much dry air can, to contend with. So there's waves right now that can can continue to remain more on the weaker side. They're going to be able to to survive and remain kind of you know weak underneath those underneath that more sheared environment and could start to develop once they get past into say north or puerto rico so we'll be definitely watching that and it's really hinting at that as we get towards between the 10th and the 15th day time frame so i do feel i think things are going to be changing in a big way where most some of this main development type region will start to become more unsettled and a lot of the drier air will start to kind of creep away, which will allow this ridge of high pressure going to be more of a dominating factor over, over the Bermuda High, which will allow these systems to traverse further westbound than typically what we've seen of late with it even being sheared out or they get pulled out to sea. So it becomes more favorable to continue on a more westward track once we get towards the 20th time frame of September, because the, the latest guidance on the overall precipitation anomalies is kind of hinting at that. It, it almost flips it, right? So we're seeing below average precipitation in areas that have seen as all the activity right now, and in the areas that have been pretty much nothing you can't even speak of, are now getting well above average precipitation. So I do feel once we get past the 20th of the month, once we, you know, back, back in towards the Lesser Antilles, the Western Caribbean, Jamaica, back into the Cayman Islands, I think these areas will be definitely be more in play and you'll definitely have to start paying attention to more of these waves that are come across because they're definitely hinting at they're gonna be able to continue further westbound and stay more, stay alive, therefore it probably increasing the probabilities of these becoming true tropical storms or potentially hurricanes during that time frame. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Definitely stay tuned to my overall winter thoughts coming up for tomorrow's video. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already and catch my next update where I protect you before and after the storm.